So we finally saw a big, big, big chunk of the new Zelda. It's called Breath of the Wild. We don't have to just call it the new Zelda or Zelda NX or Zelda Wii U anymore, which is nice. I really like the logo too. There's like a flower and the sword. and There's like a kind of white crackly look through the letters. Very stylish. This is another game that did like a couple of really big changes that I am totally on board for with the series. The first thing you hear is like, Link, wake up, open your eyes. I'm like, is, is that voice acting in a Zelda game? And the amount of game that we played, we didn't hear Link say anything. And there's an old man, like, NPC that you talk to, and he's got the dialogue. But if they have, like, at least one person, but if they have, like, all the big story sections fully voiced, that would be cool. Just don't F it up, because what's another Nintendo game where they had voice acting? Star Fox Zero. Don't do that. The other thing I'm really happy to see is Zelda finally embracing, like, RPG elements. Now, Zelda's pretty much always been open world. But it's always had a very, like, straightforward progression system, like, you're gonna get this item at this time, and you need it to do this level, and then so on. And even in the Zeldas where it did give you, like, different outfits, you had to wear them for different scenarios. But, like, the blue one was, like, the one that you breathe underwater. But Breath of the Wild appears to have a full, like, equipment inventory system, like all the way. It's like you pick up different weapons and armor and that is awesome. That is like if you had asked me what do I want from Zelda that would have been the first thing I would have said. And you see this part where Link is in freaking plate armor. I'm like okay that's cool. It's gonna become Skyrim Zelda Dark Souls. Like a customizable Zelda game with different armor sets. That sounds awesome. Weapons too. Link is picking up all this different crap and using it as weapons. And like, if it's like a stick or like a skeleton arm, he like smacks somebody with like that broken like just a couple hits. And then he found like rusty broadsword, and that thing looked badass. It looked like the Drangleic sword from Dark Souls, except it was all covered in like char. And then it broke in three hits, and that has me a little worried. I'm like, okay. I think adding in weapon and armor variation was enough of a step. Don't go too far and make us like repair and that'll be super obnoxious if you constantly have to switch out weapons because they're breaking. I mean, I assume the freaking Master Sword won't break. And in the, like, hour of gameplay demo that they had, they found, like, a lot of different stuff. And I'm like, if you throw it at us so haphazardly, because, I mean, if there's a weapon around every corner and they all break after five hits, then they're not gonna mean anything, and that'll suck. So just careful with that, all right? I don't want to find the badass looking sword and then just have it shatter. The graphics themselves look underwhelming. Maybe it's just the stream but, or the area that they're in, but it looks kind of dull. But the fire colors are like very vibrant orange red and so is his little magic bombs things. Those are nice and bright blue. They only showed like two biodomes, but I'm not really into the whole like field plains thing. I want like forests, I want color, I want vibrance. The soundtrack sounds amazing. It sounds like a very mellow kind of Zelda game. Really going for that Breath of the Wild thing. And again, I'm totally okay with that whole free room open, like, wild nature theme. But just don't go too tribal on me. We want to lean more towards the Witcher than Far Cry Primal, alright? There's climbing too, and he scales like rock faces just like straight up. He's not using a pickaxe or a spade or nothing, he's just climbing. I heard somebody say that the map was going to be 12 times the size of Twilight Princess. And the initial reaction is, oh, big map, lots of content, whereas the reality is most likely empty, full of crap you don't really want to do. I'd rather have a smaller, focused game. You don't want to go Mad Max and just fill your mini-map with meaningless icons. Now, all they showed was Link just walking around in the world. He, he walked up to a shrine, which seems like some kind of optional little puzzle thing. I'm hoping the dungeons themselves are very tight, streamlined, and well-crafted. And the art style of the game itself appears to be somewhere between Wind Waker and Skyward Sword. Like, it's got that kind of cartoony, cel-shaded look, but there's no outlines. And it's like a realistic-looking Link. It's not like this tubby little ten-year-old Link with a giant head. I don't like his voice, though. He's like, ha, 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 like... I'm like, all right, if I can't be like a bearded 50-year-old man, I'd rather be a tubby little 10-year-old. I don't like this kind of pubescent teenage havesy fabsy thing. You can finally see all kinds of different stuff on Link's back, so he's not just shoving into a little trans-dimensional gateway he has in his pocket. This is another part where it's showing him, like, looking through binoculars and, like, tagging enemies. I'm like, again, careful with how far into the future you want to step. It's nice to see Zelda embrace some new gaming trends, but... I don't want this to become Far Cry. And it shows him like hammering away at ore and he gets like different materials. I'm like, crafting too? Really? Again, like I I think you're going a bit too far. You don't need to throw all this like open world activity meaningless stuff at me. I'm happy that I got weapons and armor. I don't need a crafting system. I really don't. Oh yeah, and they also talked about Pokemon Sun. 